Hi everybody! You need to draw a Lorenz curve and maybe even shift the Lorenz curve to show changes in income inequality. How do you do that? Well, the most important thing to get right at the start is to label the axis correctly. The y-axis must be labeled cumulative percent of income. All right? So cumulative percent of income. And the x-axis must be labeled cumulative percent of population. That's a really important start. Cumulative just means up to and including. You must label it that way though. Next, you need to draw your line of perfect equality, which is a perfectly diagonal line starting from the origin. So you can label that the line of perfect equality. Worth labeling like that. Now, you draw your Lorentz curve, and your, your Lorentz curve is just a curve which goes away from the line of perfect equality and then moves closer towards it. So it looks something like that. That is your Lorentz curve, and you just need to label it Lorentz curve 1, let's say. Let's now say that you need to shift the curve, right? So maybe in your exam you need to show uh, an economy whose income inequality has become smaller, right, less significant. How would you do that on this diagram? Well, you would shift the Lorentz curve towards the line of perfect equality. So a shift towards the line implies that there is less income inequality. A shift away from the line of perfect equality implies that there is more income inequality. Right, so if you're shifting the curve to show less income inequality, you just do something like this. That would be your Lorentz curve. You can label that Lorentz curve too. So really simple. That's all you need to do. You can also show the Gini coefficient on here, which is just the distance between the Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality divided by the total distance beneath the line of perfect equality. All right. So if I put some uh, labels on here, so A, B, and C. For Lorentz curve uh, 1, the Gini coefficient would be a plus b divided by a plus b plus c. For Lorentz curve 2, it would be a divided by b plus c. All right? So you can also uh, show how to measure the Gini coefficient by using a Lorentz curve diagram like this. Always check that we've aced the diagram. Have we labeled our axis? That's really important here. Yes, we have. Have we labeled all of our different curves and lines? Yes, we have. That's very important to do and very easy to forget in these Lorentz curve diagrams. Have we labeled our equilibria? There are none, so we don't need to worry about that. Therefore, we have a our diagram. We can move on and continue with our analysis. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.